I've seen a recent surge on A73 social media groups from people asking advice about buying memory cards. Now, sometimes it's people just asking which manufacturer's cards are the better choice, but most of the time it's asking should they buy UHS-1 cards or UHS-2? And alarmingly, some of the times that people try and answer this question, they give very bad advice and in some cases give completely false information. So with this video, I want to delve into what the real world differences are between buying UHS-1 versus UHS-2, not just for stills, but also for shooting video as well. Obviously, it will be focused around the a7 III because that's the camera that I personally use, but the principles for all of this apply to any camera. But before we get into the nitty gritty of that, I just wanna take a minute to tell you about the sponsor of today's video. I don't know about you, but I personally used to find working with PDF documents incredibly frustrating at times. Not anymore though, thanks to PDF Element. PDF Element is the all-in-one simple and convenient way to not only create and edit PDF documents with its intuitive layout and easy to understand editing setups, but it also gives you many other fantastic features such as being able to merge multiple PDF documents into a single file, being able to convert PDF documents to and from other common formats such as Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoint slides, HTML, and even JPEGs. You can create and store digital signatures to make signing future PDF documents much quicker, as well as being able to add passwords for security to control who is able to access, edit, or print your PDF documents. You can also optimize your PDFs to compress down your documents into much smaller manageable file sizes, and thanks to it being available not only on PC and Mac, but also iOS and Android, along with its ability to link up to your Google Drive or Dropbox, you can now access, edit, and store your PDF documents from anywhere at any time. If PDF Element sounds like the answer to your PDF prayers and great news, you can now get 50% off your purchase using the link in the description down below. And the cards we will be comparing up today the SanDisk Extreme Pro UHS-1 cards, and in the UHS-2 corner, the Sony SFG series. Now, when it comes to choosing cards, there's several factors you'll consider. Obviously, the price and the performance of the card. But you also need to consider not only the performance of the card, but also the performance of your camera, and what are you using it for. Now, in terms of the performance for the card, on the front of this card, you will notice here it has written 170 megabytes per second. Now, you might think that that is referring to how quickly information can be written onto the card. That's not actually the card's write speed. This is referring to the read speed, how quickly information can be pulled from the card. The write speed of this card is only 90 megabytes a second. Now, a quick side note on the read speed for this card, it is a very niche number. I have delved into this in more detail in this video up here, but basically, prior to SanDisk releasing these 170 meg versions, they had 95 meg versions, which had 95 megabytes a second read speeds. However, you can only get the 170 megabytes a second read speed when you use this card with this specific SanDisk card reader. If you try using this card with any other UHS-1 or UHS-2 reader, you will still only get the old school 95 meg read speed. And I have factored that into some of the tests that we're going to do later on. By comparison, the Sony SFG card has a maximum read speed of 300 megabytes a second and a write speed of 299, which means the read speed is nearly double the speed of the UHS-1 when used with the SanDisk card reader and is triple the read and write speed of most UHS-1 cards, including this in any normal card reader. So surely this is three times better. Not necessarily. Because like I said, you also have to factor in how much potential has your camera got. The Sony a7 III, for example, has two memory card slots, but only one of them is UHS-2 compatible. The other is UHS-1. So even if I have a memory card with a 300 megabytes a second write speed, 
If I'm using it in the UHS-1 card slot, the camera can only physically write to this card at UHS-1 speeds. Another point to remember is with cameras like the a7 III that have two memory card slots, but the card slots are different formats, so one is UHS-2, one is UHS-1, the camera will generally throttle the speeds back to whatever the slowest memory card is. So even if I have a UHS-2 memory card in the UHS-2 card slot, if I'm recording to the UHS-1 card slot as well, even if it's a UHS-2 card in there, both cards will only get written to at a UHS-1 speed because the camera can't handle two data streams at different speeds. However, more importantly, despite the fact that this camera does have a UHS-2 card slot, this slot can't reach the maximum potential speeds of this card. If you look online at speed tests done by other people, you will see that the maximum speed you will ever get from the UHS-2 card slot is around about 150 megabytes a second on this particular camera. Which means despite the fact that the UHS-2 card in the UHS-2 card slot will still perform faster than a UHS-1 card would, it's still only working at half the potential capacity of this particular card. But crucially, you do still get a faster maximum write speed from the UHS-2 card in the UHS-2 card slot than you get from a UHS-1. And in terms of where this makes a difference, really the big difference comes down to when you're shooting large bursts of images. So to test how much of a difference this made, I ran an experiment where I shot a burst of uncompressed RAW files at 10 frames a second for three seconds, which means I shot 30 RAW images, and I then timed how long it took the camera to record those RAW files to the memory card and completely clear the buffer. And I ran these tests with both memory cards in the same UHS-2 card slot, so there can be no question of maybe the UHS-1 slot is different to the UHS-2. It's all coming down to how quickly the cards can work. For the UHS-1 card, after three seconds of shooting raw images, it took an additional 18 seconds for the buffer to completely clear, whereas the UHS-2 took only eight seconds. In reality, a UHS-1 card in an a7 III can still clear an uncompressed RAW file in around half a second. So for just an odd single shot or a very short burst, there's not going to be that much of a difference. Where you will see a benefit is if you are shooting prolonged bursts, not only can the buffer clear quicker with a UHS-2 card, but more crucially as well, you can get more shots because the buffer is able to empty itself quicker, so there's less chance of you missing a crucial moment. But that's stills. What about for video? And this is really where the big misinformation that I've seen people claiming comes in. Because I've seen people claim that you can't shoot 4K video on an A7 III unless you have a UHS-2 memory card, which I can assure you is complete rubbish for the very simple fact that I've been shooting 4K video with that camera now for the past two years, and I've only owned a UHS-2 memory card for the past two days. When it comes to looking at video in a memory card, there's another area that you have to consider. The write speed of the memory card is all well and good, but that's only a maximum potential write speed. Just because it can reach that potential speed doesn't mean you will always get that speed. More often than not, there will be fluctuations in the data flow. And that's not a problem for shooting stills because you're just clearing stuff out of a buffer. But for video, it can be a real problem because you need the information to come straight from the sensor onto the memory card. And so any fluctuations in speed could result in dropped frames. So there's another rating that gets quoted on memory cards specific for video, and that is the V rating. And this refers to the minimum speed that the card can maintain constantly. In the case of the UHS-1 card, this is rated as V30, which means it can sustain 30 megabytes a second. And this particular UHS-2 card is a V90, or 90 megabytes a second. Now, I suspect people make this false interpretation because the 4K in these cameras can go up to 100 megabits a second. However, that's megabits, not megabytes. 100 megabits a second equates to only 12 and a half megabytes per second. 
Now, don't get me wrong, there are some memory cards that can't handle 4K in these cameras. For example, the SanDisk Ultras don't have a high enough sustainable write speed to manage 100 megabits a second recording. But just because one card can't handle it doesn't mean none of them can. Like I said, the SanDisk Extreme Pros are the only memory cards that I've been using for the past two years, and they work perfectly fine with this camera. In fact, you are watching me now on the A6400, which is also recording 4K 100 megabits a second, and this doesn't even have a UHS-2 memory slot available. Really, you think the limit of UHS-1 comes in when you're then dealing with three and 400 megabits a second bit rates, which realistically now, at the moment, is only in cameras that are recording either 8K or 4K 120 or raw video, which isn't the case for most consumer level cameras. So for most people, UHS-1 cards will work perfectly fine. Now, I did get into a debate with somebody the other week who claimed that even though you can record 4K to a UHS-1 memory card, you will get better results with the UHS-2 because the camera will be able to record for longer without overheating using a UHS-2 memory card. Now, I personally didn't think that that was the case, but I wanted to test it anyway just to make sure. So I ran an experiment where I had the A7 III set up on a tripod under continual lighting, so same ambient room temperature. I ran 4K recording at 100 megabits a second on the UHS-1 card until the camera shut down. I then recharged the battery and gave the camera ample time to cool down and reran the experiment using the UHS-2 memory card. And I found no difference. Both cameras displayed the temperature warning symbol at around about the same time and then shut off at around about the same time. So if you're considering memory cards for shooting video, then it's not a question of one will give you better performance than another. It's about what type of memory card is going to unlock all the features of your camera. And most manufacturers will specify the, what V ratings are required for their various recording functions. Where you can see a difference between UHS-1 and 2 for video shooters is after you've shot a video, when you're trying to get the data off the memory cards onto your computer. And this is where the read speeds of the cards come in. Because obviously a faster read speed with a card reader that can actually handle those read speeds mean you can get information off the cards quicker onto your computer. And when you're dealing with video, files can get very big very quickly like an hour long 4K recording on these cameras usually ends up being between 25 to 30 gig in file size. Now to demonstrate this, I did a test where I copied a 27 gig video file onto both of these memory cards and I then copied them back off the cards onto the same folder in my computer. And to give you the full broad results, I used the UHS-1 card in both the specific SanDisk card reader to unlock the 170 megabytes a second read speed, but also in a Transend UHS-2 card reader that will only give me the 95 meg limit. And with the Transend card reader, this achieved an average of around 92 megabytes a second transfer speed, and it took four minutes and 48 seconds. Whereas when I reran it in the Sandis card, I was able to get an average sustained read speed of 165 megabytes a second, and it took only two minutes and 40 seconds. So two minutes quicker with this same card just from changing the card reader. When I then ran the UHS-2 card using a SanDisk UHS-2 card reader, I was able to get 263 megabytes a second average read speed, and it took only one minute and 40 seconds. So a minute quicker than the UHS-1 with the SanDisk card reader. But then it comes down to an element of price as well. A 64 gig version of the SanDisk Extreme Pro UHS ones on Amazon is currently around 17 pounds. The 64 gig version of the Sony SFG series is currently 88 pounds. And like I said at the start, this is cheaper than the SanDisk UHS-2, which a 64 gig one of them is currently 116 pounds. So this UHS-2 is over five times more expensive than this UHS-1, and the SanDisk is eight or nine times more expensive than this. 
So it really becomes then a question of which is going to be worthwhile for you. And for what I personally use these for, even when I do shoot bursts of images, the UHS ones work fast enough for what I need and they handle all the video that I need. So for me, although I would see some differences between UHS-1 and UHS-2 at the moment, UHS-2 for me is not worth five times the price. However, just because it's not the case for me obviously doesn't mean it's not the case for you. Maybe you're someone who has a camera with a faster card slot. Maybe you're shooting a lot more than I am, who knows? But for anyone interested, those are what the real world differences are. It then becomes a question of, one, do you have a camera capable of making the use of UHS-2? Two, two, is the higher price tag justifiable for you? That's it for this video, guys. I will leave links to both of these memory cards and also that SanDisk card reader in the description box down below. While you're down there, if you have any questions or queries, feel free to leave them in the comment box. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.